What's up everyone? It's Tim from Tim Plays Game here with tips and tricks for Dynamax Adventures in the new Crown Tundra expansion for Pokemon Sword and Shield. Dynamax Adventures is the new mode that sees you traveling through a network of dens, battling against a variety of Dynamax Pokemon with rental Pokemon for a chance to battle and catch a legendary Pokemon. If you're having a hard time defeating the final Pokemon or any type of difficulty completing Dynamax Adventures, this video is here to help you out. Tip number one, be prepared before the adventure. Most great adventures start with preparation, and Dynamax Adventures are no exception. Check your internet connection before you start to make sure your online connection is running smoothly, and there's little chance of a disconnect. If you do disconnect, you will be replaced by an NPC player who will continue the adventure in your place. You will not be able to rejoin the adventure. Make sure to bring plenty of Pokeballs. You won't need more than four per adventure, but everything in Dynamax Adventures is a 100% capture rate. Just a reminder, you cannot bring any of, the, of your Pokemon along for the adventure. You have to use rental Pokemon given to you by a researcher or ones that you caught during the adventure. Tip number two, Dynamax when you can. There is no limit to how many times you can Dynamax or Gigantamax during a Dynamax adventure, so it's a good idea to do so whenever you get the chance. The player at the top of the list will get the first chance to Dynamax or Gigantamax during the first turn of the first battle. The second player from the top of the list will get the second chance to Dynamax during the second turn, and so on into the adventure. Max attacks can have a huge effect on the battle. Some of my favorites to use include Max Airstream, which can boost the speed stat of your entire team, Max Knuckle, which boosts the attack stat of your entire team, and Max Star Starfall, which activates a misty terrain that prevents Pokemon from being affected by a status condition. Be careful that none of your max attacks can your teammates. For instance, Max Hailstorm is a strong Ice-type attack that creates a Hailstorm, but it also damages every Pokemon that is an Ice-type each turn. Max Geyser is a powerful Water-type attack that creates a Rainstorm, but that rain can cause problems for teammates' Fire-type Pokemon. Tip number three, trade up for better Pokemon. During your adventure, you will get an opportunity to catch and potentially use the Pokemon you fought in other battles. If your Pokemon has taken a lot of damage already or is affected by a status condition, it might be a good idea to trade up for a healthy Pokemon. Your team's Pokemon can only get knocked out four times, so avoid letting your Pokemon get knocked out as often as possible. You may also want to trade your current Pokemon for one that will help your team in the final battle, and that's where our next tip comes in. Tip number four. Plan for the final battle. If you know the type of final Pokemon, you can plan accordingly. For instance, if the final Pokemon is a Steel type, you might want to trade your Pokemon for a Fire, Fighting, or Ground type during your adventure. If you know the exact final Pokemon, like Kartana for example, which is a Grass and Steel type, then you definitely want a Fire type that can do massive amounts of damage. You also want to make sure that you do not enter the final battle with a Pokemon that is weak to the type of the final Pokemon. For instance, Xerneas can use Max Overgrowth, which is a powerful grass type attack. So using this water and ground type Stompert probably wasn't a good idea. The final Pokemon keeps the same attacks, so if you don't defeat it on the first go around, you can plan on which attacks it will use in the next Dynamax adventure. Tip number five, get a hold item before the final battle. Keep your eyes open and try to make your way to these helpful backpackers, as they will give you one of a random assortment of items for your Pokemon to hold. Backpackers provide helpful hold items that can strengthen your attacks, like Muscle Band and Wise Glasses. Bright Powder is one of my favorites, as it can cause even max attacks to miss you completely. Other hold items can restore HP, like Leftovers and Citrus Berry. If you come across a pile of berries, your Pokemon will recover some health. This is perfect to come across right after a hard-fought battle, or right before the final battle. Tip number six. Be careful when taking the researcher's offer. This supposedly helpful character will make you an enticing offer. You can trade your current Pokemon for the one she is currently carrying. She won't tell you what it is, and only one person can get it. It will be any one of the Pokemon you can find in the Dynamax Adventures, other than any of the legendary Pokemon you get in the final battle. Trading Pokemon is good if done strategically, but the only strategy here is give up your Pokemon if you're okay re with replacing it with literally anything else. Be careful when taking the researcher up on her offer, because all trades are final. Tip number seven, don't attack your teammates. <laughs> 
Seriously, I don't know why this option to attack your teammates exists in Dynamax Adventure, but do not do it. <laughs> it's a cooperative game mode, the focus being on the cooperation part. Uh, that's really all I have to say about this matter. There are a few times when I can see that there being any strategy in attacking your teammates, and if you even encounter any teammate attacking you or acting inappropriate online, remember you can block any of your teammates by pressing the plus or minus button at the end of the adventure, and they will be added to your blocked user list. Tip number 8. Use status moves strategically. Doing damage is crucial to winning a battle, but a well-timed status move can be beneficial to the overall battle. Attacks that boost your stats, like Swords Dance, really help at the beginning of the battle. You can also boost the stats of your teammates with attacks like Coaching and Decorate. Attacks that cause status conditions like Toxic and Thunder Wave can make it difficult for the Dynamax Pokemon to fight back against. I personally like to use Tailwind first turn if possible to double the speed stats of all my teammates for four turns. Study up on different attacks that can turn the tide of battle in your team's favor. Tip number 9. Go for the knockout as soon as possible. On the note of the previous tip, it's a good idea to bring down the opposing Pokémon's HP as soon as you can. In a Dynamax adventure, you've got four battles to get through, and only so many turns to do it. You also must not let your team's Pokémon get knocked out four times. On top of that, the opposing Pokémon will get desperate and start attacking twice per turn when its HP gets low. The longer these battles go on, the more the odds are against you and your team, so use strong, type advantageous attacks as soon as and as often as possible. Using these tips and working with your teammates is the key to winning. And finally, tip number 10. Choose the Pokemon you keep carefully. At the end of the Dynamax adventure, you get to select one of the Pokemon that you were able to capture to keep. This includes the legendary Pokemon you fought in the final battle. I strongly suggest keeping watch for some Pokemon with unique abilities, like this Blaziken with the hidden ability Speed Boost. Hidden ability Pokemon are somewhat rare and valued amongst collectors and competitive players alike. You may even find that one of the Pokemon you captured has different colors than normally seen with. These are shiny Pokemon and are even more valued amongst trainers. Dynamax Adventures are a great way to boost your Pokemon collection to whole new heights. And that's it for tips and tricks for Dynamax Adventures and Crown Tundra for Pokemon Sword and Shield. If you feel like there are any tips that I missed, or have any of your own that you want to share, let me know in the comments section below. Stay tuned for more tips and tricks videos. For now, this is Tim from Tim Plays Games signing off, and have a good night guys.